What's up YouTube? This is Sam from Tide Schooling and today we are going to talk about the muscles of mastication. There are four muscles of mastication. All of them arise from the first pharyngeal arc. There are four pharyngeal arcs, the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. The fifth and the sixth is usually degenerate. So uh, the first uh, pharyngeal arc muscles are these four muscles which are also called the muscles of mastication and they are supplied by the a trigeminal nerve that is the mandibular branch and in this lecture we are going to talk uh, deep about these muscles and show the attachment the nerve supply and their function usually there are the, the muscles are divided into two openers uh, into two groups there is an opener group and there's a closer group and we will look all these muscles one by one let me first name these muscles then I'll go in detail about these muscles the first muscle that you can see on this lateral side this big muscle is called your temporalis muscle and this one on the uh, below the uh, temporalis on lateral side but it is superficial so it's called the superficial facial part of your masseter master and your deep part of masseter located behind it and there are two muscles you can see uh, by from the cheek side if I zoom into it this muscle is called your medial pterygoid and behind it if you want to see it below it you can see this is your medial pterygoid muscle and behind this muscle up there you got your lateral pterygoid muscle alright so first one by one we'll talk about all these muscles so remember that all the muscles we talked about are, are, are derived from your first pharyngeal arc and they are supplied by your trigeminal nerve, especially the mandibular nerve. And first we'll talk about the masseter muscle. So this masseter muscle right down here, which is uh, the masseter muscle, which is the most powerful muscle of your mastication. It is actually a quadrangular in shape you can see it exactly right down there and can be split in two parts it's the superficial part as you can see in the picture and behind it that's the deep part of it so if we talk about the attachment of this masseter muscle the superficial part actually originates from this maxillary process of your zygomatic bone so you can see this maxillary process of zygomatic bone and this it arises from here so the deep part originates from the zygomatic arc arc of your temporal bone so this is your zygomatic arc exactly this way so it also arises from there the deep part you can see behind it both parts attach uh, come down and attach to the ramus of mandible from the outside because from the inside at the angle there is some other muscle attachment from the outside and the ramus of mandible there is an attachment of this masseter muscle its special action is to elevate the mandible which is closing the mouth if you just think about it this way if we pull the mouth downward so this muscle will contract back to push the mouth up and try to close it so this muscle function is closing the mouth the, uh, the, mouth, the nerve supply is usually all for, for all of them is same that is your mandibular nerve the second muscle we come to is your temporalis muscle this is your temporalis muscle which originates from your temporal fossa which is actually a shallow depression on your lateral aspect of the skull if I remove this muscle you can see that uh, temporal fossa so the muscle is covered by your tough fascia which can be harvested surgically and used to repair perforated tympanic membrane which is an operation called myringoplasty remember this word this they might ask you in your ospi or viva that the fascia covering the temporalis muscle is also used in the perforated tympanic membrane so its attachment if we talk about the temporalis muscle attachment it actually originates from the your temporalis fossa it condenses into a tendon as it goes down it condenses into a tendon and insert on the coronoid process of mandible if you see exactly down there it comes down and attached to the coronoid process of your mandible if you see it back there like from inside it goes back down there and attaches at the coronoid process of your mandible 
In action, if you talk about it, is it elevates the mandible, closing the mouth, similar to your masseter muscle, and also retracts the mandible, pulling the jaw posteriorly. If you try to pull the jaw posteriorly, especially the function of this muscle, just call it a paralysis. Let's talk about the medial pterygoid muscle. So in order to see the medial pterygoid muscle, you can see if you remove, if I'm going to remove this uh, masseter, big masseter, masseter, mas masseter muscle. I'm sorry about pronouncing it sometime different, it's sometime correct. So if I remove the mas masseter muscle deep and the superficial part of it, and also remove, I'm also going to remove the, should I remove the mandible? Because if I remove the mandible, this muscle will be left behind. So, all right, I'm not removing the muscle. So if you can see, this is your uh, medial pterygoid muscle. If you see it from behind, you can see it this way. It's on the inside. It is also divided into two parts. We will talk about this one. So this is, remember, this is your medial pterygoid. So the medial pterygoid muscle has also a quadrangular shape, if you can see it correctly, a quadrangular shape and uh, with two heads deep and superficial so this one back there is your superficial this one behind it is your deep and it is located fairly to the uh, lateral pterygoid if you talk about the attachments you can see clearly that the superficial head originates from your medial or uh, your maxillary tuberosity and the uh, pro uh, pedimental process of your palatine bone exactly down there and the, the deep head originates from the lateral pterygoid. You can see it clearly from the lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone. And both parts attach back to the ramus of the mandible. If you can see it down here, they are both attaching at the same place, which is near the angle of the mandible. If you talk about the action, it elevates the mandible, which is... Uh, closing your mouth so this is the only closer uh, mouth closer muscle among these four muscles of mastication all other muscles are actually mouth opener and now let's talk about the lateral pterygoid muscle so if we remove all right let me remove a few muscles uh, let me remove this mandible first so we can have a good look at it all right so i'm going to hide this and this is your uh, medial pterygoid and this is your lateral pterygoid behind it can you see that one all right so this is your lateral pterygoid exactly down there there was your mandible which I have just removed so the lateral pterygoid has also a triangular uh, it has a triangular shape if you can see it this way like it's kind of forming this triangular shape uh, as I'm using this mouse to make sure you can understand it uh, it has two heads you can see it properly uh, with two heads superior and the inferior it has horizontally oriented if you can compare it, all the muscles they are going down but this muscle is kind of horizontally oriented muscle fibers and thus is the major protractor of the mandible which called protractor muscle so uh, if we talk about the attachments the superior head of this muscle which is this one originates from the greater wing you can see it down here, you can see it's starting from the greater wing of the sphenoid. The inferior head origin is from the lateral pterygoid, right? The lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid. And th those two heads converge together as they go backwards into a tendon which attaches to the neck of the mandible. If I, if I would put the mandible down here, you can see clearly it is going to attach to the neck of the mandible. You can see um, there's I have, as I have removed this bone down here. So its action is similar, which is acting bilaterally. The lateral pterygoids protect the mandible, pushing the jaw forwards. Uh, unilateral action produces a side-to-side -side movement of the jaw, and it also acts as a mouth opener. It also helps in opening the mouth. So these are the muscles of mastication, these four muscles. So this is it regarding... Uh, this video regarding the muscle domestication. See you with another video. If you find this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe and let us know uh, on which topic you need a lecture. We can make it for you. Please visit Tyke Schooling. Thank you for watching.